Well, China has made history successfully landing on what has been up until now the unexplored far side of the moon. China has managed to bring moon rocks back to Earth, first mission to do so in over 40 years. For decades, the moon was silent, but now it's whispering secrets again. After the triumphs of the Apollo missions and the Soviet lunar landers, humanity looked further beyond the moon to Mars, Jupiter, and the stars beyond. The moon, once our greatest symbol of discovery, became an afterthought, a barren relic of the past. For nearly half a century, no one returned to touch its surface, but quietly, that changed. In the early 21st century, a new kind of space race began. NASA reignited its lunar ambitions with the Artemis program, aiming to return humans by 2027. SpaceX built reusable ships that looked pulled straight from science fiction. India landed its own robotic explorers. And then, on the other side of the world, China emerged with a bold and meticulously planned vision. Its spacecraft ventured into regions no human or robot had ever reached. They brought back samples unseen since the 1970s and uncovered something that could change how we understand not only the moon, but the future of energy and life itself. So the question isn't just what China found, it's why now and what it means for all of us. The China National Space Administration, or CNSA, was founded in the early 2000s with a clear mission to make China a major space power. Unlike the hurried space race of the Cold War, China's strategy was methodical, incremental and precise, a long-term roadmap built to ensure one thing, progress that could not be undone. They called it the Chang'e program, named after the ancient Chinese moon goddess who ascended to the heavens. Each mission was a chapter in a story carefully unfolding, each more ambitious than the last. In 2007, Chang'e 1 became China's first lunar orbiter. It mapped the entire surface of the moon in three dimensions, revealing its contours and composition like never before. Then came the first hint of something extraordinary. Among the data, scientists detected traces of helium-3, a rare isotope on Earth, but potentially abundant on the Moon. Helium-3 could power a new generation of nuclear fusion reactors, producing clean energy with virtually no radioactive waste. More on this later. What began as a scientific survey suddenly became something much bigger, a quest for the fuel of the future. In 2010, Chang'e 2 followed. It flew just 15 kilometers above the surface, closer than any Chinese craft had ever dared. Its mission, to photograph potential landing sites for future rovers and prepare for the first soft landing in over 30 years. Each mission was not an isolated event, but part of a chain, a deliberate evolution of capability. From mapping, to landing, to returning samples, to building a presence. China wasn't just returning to the moon, it was claiming a role in humanity's next great chapter, one written not in rivalry, but in precision, patience, and power. And soon, that patience would pay off. Because what came next would change everything we thought we knew about the moon. It had been 37 years since anything from Earth had gently touched the moon, not since the Soviet Lunar 24 mission of 1976 had any nation achieved a soft landing. But in December 2013, China did the impossible. Chang'e 3, the third chapter in China's lunar saga, descended through the black silence and touched down in Mare Imbrium, the Sea of Rains. It marked China's first landing on another world and the return of humanity to the lunar surface. Rolling out of its metallic cradle came a small, six-wheeled explorer, Yu Tu, the Jade Rabbit, a name drawn from an ancient Chinese legend. A mythical creature said to live on the moon, pounding the elixir of immortality beneath the gaze of the goddess Chang'e herself. This was more than technology. It was symbolism, a link between myth and machine, between the ancient dreamers and the new age of explorers. But U2 was more than just a poetic symbol. It was a scientific marvel. On its back sat the first ultraviolet telescope ever placed on the moon, a window into the cosmos unobstructed by Earth's atmosphere. It observed the stars and galaxies from the stillness of the lunar night, turning the moon itself into a deep space observatory. With Chang'e 3, China became the third nation in history capable of operating robotic vehicles on the moon. It wasn't a symbolic landing. It was a statement that a new space power had arrived and it was here to stay. Six years later, China set its sights on a place no human had ever reached, the far side of the moon. 
a hemisphere that always faces away from Earth, forever hidden by the moon's rotation, an expanse untouched by human eyes and unreachable by radio waves. The challenge was enormous. From that side, direct communication with Earth is impossible. But China's engineers had a plan that sounded almost like science fiction. They launched Kuekiao, the Magpie Bridge, a satellite placed precisely at the Earth-Moon L2 point, a position of gravitational balance. Suspended nearly 65,000 kilometers beyond the moon, Kekiao could see both the far side and Earth at once, acting as a cosmic relay between them. And then, in the quiet darkness of January 2019, the Chang'e 4 lander began its descent. As its engines fired, the entire world watched, though none could see it directly. It touched down inside the von Karman crater, deep within the South Pole Aitken Basin, a colossal scar stretching 2,500 kilometers wide, the largest known impact structure in the solar system, older than any mountain on Earth, older even than the moon's visible face. From the lander rolled a second Jade Rabbit, U-22, a more advanced version built to explore the unknown. The images it sent back stunned scientists. The far side was nothing like the moon we thought we knew. No smooth seas of lava, no flat plains, only jagged mountains and craters that looked frozen in time. Analyses from U22's instruments revealed a thicker crust, rich in ancient material. Some samples even appeared to contain rocks from the moon's mantle, matter exposed from deep below the surface, untouched for four billion years. It was the first time in history that such material had been found on the moon. This was more than a scientific triumph. It was a leap into the unknown, the opening of a chapter no nation had dared to write. Even NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein, bound by law from formal cooperation, publicly congratulated China's success. Because for the first time, humanity had explored the dark half of its oldest companion. The far side of the moon was no longer a mystery. It had become the new frontier. And yet, what lay buried beneath that silence was only the beginning. Beneath the moon's cold surface lies a treasure unlike any found on Earth, a substance so rare it could power our civilization for millennia. When the Chang'e 5 mission returned to Earth in December 2020, it brought back 1.7 kilograms of lunar rock and soil, the first fresh samples in more than four decades. And within that gray dust, scientists found something extraordinary, a new mineral unlike any ever cataloged, a tiny, transparent crystal with a strange composition. They named it Changesite. Why? Hidden inside its atomic structure were traces of helium-3, a rare isotope scientists have dreamed about for decades. To put its power into perspective, just 40 grams of helium-3 could release as much energy as 5,000 tons of coal. And without the deadly radiation or toxic waste of traditional nuclear fuels, unlike uranium or plutonium, Helium-3 fusion produces almost no radioactive byproducts. It is pure, clean, and astonishingly efficient. Scientists estimate the moon holds over 1 million tons of helium-3 trapped within its regolith, enough to power Earth's energy needs for tens of thousands of years. For China's scientists and policymakers, that changes everything. Helium-3 isn't just a scientific curiosity, it's the fuel of the future, and whoever learns to harness it first controls the next great energy revolution. To many analysts, the moon has become the Persian Gulf of the 21st century, a new frontier of energy and influence. The race for helium-3 is no longer theoretical. It's strategic, it's geopolitical, because whoever controls the moon's resources may soon control the power that lights our planet. But not all of China's discoveries came neatly labeled in crystal and data. Some were stranger, more mysterious, and far harder to explain. In mid-2019, operators of the U-22 rover noticed something unusual. At the bottom of a small crater glistened a shiny, glass-like patch, reflecting light in ways nothing else around it did. The team paused their mission, cameras focused, and the world began to speculate. Could it be metallic debris, a liquid substance on an airless world, or something artificial? For weeks, the images were kept under wraps. Mystery gave way to frenzy. The internet filled the void with theories, ranging from plausible to fantastical. When the truth was finally revealed, it was no alien artifact. It was impact melt, lunar rock fused into glass by the heat of a meteorite strike, a material rich in olivine and pyroxene, 
similar to samples from the Apollo missions, but formed in a place untouched for billions of years. Even without mystery or myth, it was still a revelation, a glimpse into the violent origins of our solar system. Then, in 2021, the rover's cameras caught something else, a cube-shaped silhouette on the horizon. It stood out sharply against the barren landscape, unnaturally geometric, eerily precise. The internet erupted again. Headlines called it the Lunar Hut, or Mystery House. Some claimed it was evidence of alien architecture, others, a secret base. But as U-22 rolled closer over the course of several lunar days, the illusion dissolved. It wasn't a structure. It was a rock, oddly shaped, perched at the edge of a crater. Its outline, curiously enough, resembled a crouching rabbit, a poetic twist of fate for the Jade Rabbit Rover itself. What China's missions have shown us so far is that wonder and science are not opposites. They are partners, guiding us toward truths still hidden beneath the dust. In the shadowed silence of the far side of the moon, something stirred. Inside a small sealed biosphere aboard the Chang'e 4 lander, China carried the most unlikely passengers, cotton seeds, potato seeds, fruit fly eggs, and yeast, a miniature ecosystem, a world within a world. In January 2019, as the lunar day began, a miracle happened. A cotton seed sprouted, sending up the first green shoot ever grown on another world. For a brief moment, there was life on the moon, not imported, not imagined, grown. The sprout lived only a few days before the lunar night descended, a freezing darkness that plunged temperatures below minus 70 degrees Celsius. The tiny plant withered, its experiment ended. But in that fleeting moment, something profound had been proven, that biological growth is possible in lunar gravity, a tiny green sprout on a gray world, a hint of life beyond Earth. By 2020, China had already done what no one had in more than four decades. Chang'e 5 returned 1.7 kilograms of lunar soil and rock to Earth, the first sample return mission since 1976. The material, rich in volcanic glass and ancient basalt, offered clues to how the moon evolved long after its formation. The samples confirmed the moon was geologically active more recently than scientists believed, only two billion years ago, proof that the lunar story was far from over. Then, in 2024, came Chang'e 6, its mission, to land on the far side once again, this time to bring back samples. Against the odds, it succeeded. Nearly two kilograms of rock and dust from a region untouched since the moon's creation, a first in human history. But China's ambitions don't end there. The next steps, Chang'e 7 and Chang'e 8, will push the frontier even further south. At the lunar south pole, sunlight never reaches the crater floors. Temperatures there drop below minus 200 degrees Celsius and yet, deep inside that eternal shadow, scientists believe water ice lies preserved, frozen remnants from the dawn of the solar system. Finding that ice means everything. Water can be turned into oxygen, hydrogen fuel, even drinking supplies, the foundation for a permanent human presence beyond Earth. To prepare, Chang'e 8, expected around 2030, will test 3D printing using lunar soil, turning dust into structure and theory into habitat. The ultimate goal, the International Lunar Research Station, a permanent base built on the moon's south pole in the 2030s, a collaboration led by China and Russia, but operating outside the US led Artemis Accords. For the first time since humanity learned to dream, our species is preparing not just to visit the moon, but to stay. And in that pursuit, the line between exploration and ambition blurs because every step taken on that pale, distant world echoes far beyond science, into the future of civilization itself. Half a century ago, the space race was measured in flags and footprints. Today, it's measured in resources, technology, and strategic presence. The United States, China, and their partners are now racing toward the same destination, the Lunar South Pole. The goal is no longer just exploration, it's permanence, bases that can harvest water, mine resources, and serve as launch pads for the next leap, Mars and beyond. But this new space race raises an old question, who truly owns the moon? The Outer Space Treaty of 1967 declared that no nation may claim sovereignty over celestial bodies. The moon, it said, belongs to all humankind. 
Yet, the treaty never imagined a future of mining rights, resource extraction, or corporate colonies. Now, those loopholes are being tested. While the US and its allies pursue the Artemis Accords, a framework to govern cooperation and resource use, China and Russia are charting their own course, building the International Lunar Research Station, a base outside that system. Experts warn that whoever masters lunar resource extraction will gain more than prestige. They'll hold the keys to fusion energy, deep space infrastructure, and the next century of technological power. The moon, once a symbol of mystery, has become the frontier of human destiny. Its gray dust now carries the weight of politics, ambition, and dreams. And for the first time in history, the question is not if we will return, but who will stay.